Okay. Um, so we're we're still on unit one. Um, the Gleesy has put the page numbers of what we are talking about here. This is page twenty-seven through thirty, in Hansen and Quinn. Um, we're talking about the definite article. Um, this is a word that means the in Greek. Okay, not a book, but the book. Um, and its basic function is like that, it, uh, exactly like English, the. It does some other things um, that the English article doesn't do, and they're listed in the book on page 30. Um, but we want to talk about first about the forms of the definite article, which is Belize has written up here, and then uh, about a very important function that the English article doesn't have, but that's important in a language like ancient Greek. So let's look at these forms. There's this is a, a word the that has three different genders. Why does it have three genders? You may ask. Um, instead of being like a noun, um, uh, the the word the believe it or not is an adjective. That is, it's a word that modifies a noun that in some way delimits it. So so the book is, makes us you're referring to a specific book in that sense. It tells you something that distinguishes one book from another book, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a noun in itself, but it's an adjective that, that delimits or describes a specific example or specific examples of something, right? Um, and that's why it has to have different genders, because the noun that it can be talking about, it can be the book, the child, the elephant, the toothpaste, it can be anything, and that thing can have different grammatical genders in Greek. And so you have a rule in Greek um, that an adjective like the, okay, but it also works for things like good and bad and helpful and stupid, okay, an adjective uh, always agrees with it, the noun that it modifies in gender, okay, so if it's masculine, it should be masculine, the, the, the article has to be masculine or the adjective, uh, in gender, in number, that is whether it's singular or plural, or in some cases dual, we're not learning the dual in this class, so don't worry about it. And, uh, and thirdly, um, in case, okay, so if a noun is the subject of a sentence, you're going to have to have the article be in the same case as it, as well as it's the same gender and number. So that's why um, adjectives in Greek have all these forms for the three genders. Some don't. Some have only two. Um, but that, and those are the ones that go back to before there was a difference between masculine and feminine. But but the newer system has three genders for adjectives. So that's why you've got the three genders for this little word, ha, okay, he, da. Um, notice that this, this is the, the masculine and the feminine forms in the nominative are different from all the others, okay? All the others, the, the stem of the word begins with a T, okay? And basically you have the endings for the masculine Outside of the nominative, you have the endings for the masculine form of the word the, of the article, are the same as those of logos, to, do, and ton, okay? For the feminine forms outside of the nominative, these are the same as the genitive, the dative and the accusative of techne, okay? Um, in the case of the neuter, forms are like doron, except in the nominative and the accusative, there's no nu, okay? It's just plain ta, and it's actually older. It once was a t, a d there, okay, but it fell, it fell out, um, it disappeared, and so we just got ta. Um, but these forms are distinctive for the genders. Um, notice that the genitive and dative for the masculine and the neuter are the same, okay, um, but they're distinctive for each of the cases. Um, yes, and you have the contrast between forms with the with a diphthong in the singular and with a long vowel um, is against those with a short vowel in the case of the masculine and the neuter, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here's another thing that's different about the masculine and the feminine nominative. They don't begin with T. They don't have an accent, okay? They're just H. See, there's an H over the eta. Yeah, it looks a little, a little bit weird. A little hard to a little see. Bit, you need a little bit clearer. Okay, is that they have an H and a vowel and no accent, all right? So there are a couple of kinds of words in Greek that don't have accents. And what happens with a word like ha or he is that they become get glommed onto the word that follows them, okay? Um, they're called proclitics. So 
they, they really are uh, become like a syllable added on to the next word, just like the always follows is followed by a noun in English or an adjective, the good book, the, the, the good wife, all that kind of stuff, right? Okay, so now let's look at the forms of the plural where you see very similar things. That is, the masculine nominative plural and the feminine nominative plural, again, have no T and no accent, and they begin with an H, okay, hoy and hi. Those are the endings of the nominative plural of second declension nouns in the, in the case of hoy, and nominative plural first declension nouns in the case of hi. Move that down. Yeah. Um, and um, we, we, we see, however, that when it comes to the neuter, we revert to type, right? It's just like in the singular declension. You've got the T suffix, and the endings are like those of the neuter nouns of the type do, ron, da, do, and tois, ta, like do, ra, do, ra, do, ron, do, rois, and do, ra. Okay? And, the, and the, femi the feminine, you've got high tone tais, tas, ton, tois, and tus as the genitive data of an accuser, respectively, for um, the masculine one. So, so in a sense, these these forms are once you know your masculine uh, and neuter second declension nouns, and you know your um, techne type nouns of the first declension. These little words are very similar. Okay, mm -hmm. um, the the places where they're different are very few. That is, ha and hey, the nominative singular masculine and feminine, and hoi and hi, the masculine. Uh, and feminine nominative of singular, where you, there you at least have the endings, but you don't have the T, okay? So I think these are e easy to learn. There's no vocative of the article, okay? Um, let's talk a little bit now about the function of the article, and this is, this is an important concept. Um, what the book teaches us, um, yeah, memorize. <laughs> it'll it'll, save, it'll, your it'll life, save your life, trust me. Yeah, that's a great thing. Okay, so let, let's talk about this. If we, if we take, for example, um, why don't we go move on to the next screen, we'll like make a little phrase, and we say, um, we, we've learned the word logos, which mean word, means word. Um, let's, let's learn another word, which is adelphos, okay, which is inflected like logos, except for two things. It has an accent on the last syllable, its genitive is u, okay. Um, look, look at the accent of these of this particular word because it exemplifies something that we're going to see again that, that demonstrates our structural principle. Okay, and adelphon. And you don't have to write the plural, but the same thing is going to happen. Notice that the nominative and the accusative of adelphos have an acute accent, okay, which may, pairs them together, whereas the gen the, the the genitive and the dative have a circumflex, okay, on the last syllable. Um, this is true of all uh, second declension nouns, whether whatever gender um, they are, um, if they have an accent on the last syllable in the nominative singular, okay. So, happens in the first declension as well, right? Uh, yes, and you have it in the first declension as well, exactly. So it's a generalizable rule for first and second declension nouns that uh, a word that's accented with an acute on the last syllable. Uh, it keeps that acute in the accusative, but it becomes a date, uh, circumflex in the genitive and the dative, both singular and plural. Okay. So, so you'll know it yep. in the dictionary entry, basically, or in the yes. vocab listing that where it's supposed to be accented. Yep. Yep. Then... There's all, one other weird thing just about this word, just to show you that sometimes words are have oh, their yes. own biographies. This word has a funny accent in the vocative. It's the same weird vocative that is e. Eh, but instead of having an accent on the last syllable, which is where you would expect it to be, even though you don't know about where accents go, okay, we'll teach you that soon, um, it moves back up to the beginning of the word. You may notice that, generally speaking, the accents of nouns are staying where they are in the nominative, okay? Um, they change a bit like this, and, and they change in other ways that we'll understand soon, okay? All right, so this is the word for brother. Um, we have this word in English in Philadelphia which is the city of brotherly love. The phil part is the love part, the Adelphos is the brother. Anyway, this is the, this is the one of the, uh, this is the living word for brother in Greek. So we need this to make a little phrase in Greek, and that's where we want to understand how the article works. If we make the phrase, the words of the brother, or the brother's words, okay, let's just put it in the nominative, hoi, logoi, 
we do it the way we do in English, we'd say hoi logoi to adelfu, the words of the brother. Okay? Um, and you can do exactly that in, in Greek, okay? Um, and most of the time that will be understood, okay, as, as meaning the words of the brother. But Greek can do a, a very interesting thing with the article. It can group expressions like the words of the brother. That's, that's a little noun phrase, okay? That's a clump of language that goes together. So Greek can take the, 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 the genitive of the brother, the modifier of the noun, right? It's specifying which words, and it can put it in, in um, two different, it can put it in two different places. It can, you can do hoi to adel fu logoi, like that. In other words, between the article and the noun, okay? Or it can do hoi logoi, hoi to adel fu. Okay, so if we translate these literally, we get something very weird from an English speaking point of view. If the first one, the first one is the words of the brother, that's the way it comes naturally to us. But to Greek, what comes naturally is the of the brother words. That's a way of but uh, making sure that tu adel fu, that you understand that tu adel fu goes with hoi logoi. In a language like Greek that doesn't have word order rules that identify the grammar, there's a rule about contingency, about things being next to each other. But sometimes things that are next to each other, well, there's things to the right and left of them, and you can't necessarily tell where they go, okay? So Greek uses the definite article to group things together. And in the third example, the words, the ones of the brother, okay, is an even more flagrant way of grouping to Adelfu with Lagoi. Um, so, so the the way we the way we describe this rule is by we say that if a modifier, in this case, is the genitive of the brother, follows the definite article of another noun, okay, if it's if it comes after it, okay, um, then it's grouped with it. It's uh, what we call an attribute of that noun. So that works for both cases. We've got hoi to adelfu, that follows the article uh, of logoi, hoi, and hoi logoi, hoi to adelfu, that follows again the article of logoi, which is repeated, okay? So so this is a, kind of a thing to get the hang of, and it's very helpful, especially in the beginning, when you're in a language which doesn't have word order rules, this is a way to Kind of see what goes together. That's a very important thing to get the hang of for us as speakers of a language in which we do have stringent word or rules. And here's just one kind of word or rule that we have in Greek. Okay, great. Thank you.